Hello and welcome back to another video in this Principles of Finance series. Um, this time we're going to be dealing with stock valuation. Uh, previously we dealt with bond valuation. Uh, if we just take a quick peek back at our little chart that I think I've drawn before. Um, the raise of raising capital for a government or a corporation uh, can either be done through debt or equity. Um, in the debt side, we know that they could go to a bank and take out a loan, or they could issue bonds to investors and pay them small interest rates so that they can receive that money today. Um, the other way of doing it was equity, um, and that is by issuing common stock or preferred stock. So for the first half of this video, for this video probably we're going to be dealing with common stock. Now, common stock represents an ownership interest in a corporation, um, and to the typical investor it's really just a piece of paper. Um, but it's really characterized by two features. And those two fi features I've actually laid out over here. Um, what is the point of holding stock? You know, where are the returns in holding stock? So, the present value of any asset, as we, as we said before, is really, you know, all the future cash flows. Um, so all the cash flows at time t, which could be one, two, three, four, five, etc., etc., all the way up to infinity, um, but discounted by one plus r, which is the rate of return to the power of t. That's how it works. The present value of any asset today is just the summation of the present values of all the future cash flows that asset is going to give. Now, what are the returns on stock? So R is you know, our return on stock. How is it divided? There's two types of return. One of them is the dividend yield, which essentially is the fact that a stock entitles the owner to dividends. Um, so when the company actually has earnings that it's paying out, um, in dividends, and management chooses to pay those dividends rather than retaining them uh, in retained earnings, um, then a stockholder is entitled to a dividend, and the return on receiving a dividend is expressed as the dividend yield, which is D1 over P0. Now, P0 over here, let's just write these out. Um, R equals, we'll call it the rate of return. D1 is the dividend that's being paid out next period. Dividend in the next period. And it's vital that you understand that it's next period's dividend um, because we don't care about dividends that were paid out already. Um, dividends that were paid out you know, last quarter or last year, we don't care about. That has nothing to do with the present value of this asset, because the present value of this asset is always standing today and looking out into the future, which cash flows is it going to give me in the future, um, which is why we only care about the dividend that it's paying next period. Um, P0, well, this is just the price of the asset, um, or you know, the price of the stock. Um, and that's today, you know, zero is today. Now, when I say the price of the stock, I'm speaking about its intrinsic value, um, not necessarily its market value, um, because sometimes there will be discrepancies between the intrinsic value and the market value. So we're taking this as our calculation of the intrinsic value of the stock. And then finally, this G over here represents the capital gains appreciation. Um, and capital gains is really is really the gains that you talk about when you say, oh, I bought a stock for $5 and then it went up to $10. Um, <clears throat> so the way you would calculate the capital gains on that is very simply by calculating the percentage change. So if you if you bought a stock for, for let's say, for $10, sorry, for $5, um, and then it went up to 10 you would do, you know, 10 minus 5 divided by 5, 100% return. Um, actually, another cool way to uh, to calculate percentage of change, I'm just going to show now because this is how I've always done it. Um, it's much quicker. You just take the price of the stock today, let's say it's 10, and then you divide it by the original price of the stock, let's say it was 5, and then you minus 1. Um, that essentially takes you to the same place, and that equals 100% as well. It's just a quicker way to do a uh, percentage of change. Um, but basically, that's the idea of, of, uh, of capital gains. Now, where do we go from here? Well, let's begin by rearranging this formula. Let's rearrange this formula so that we can yield the present value of the stock, P0. And that is going to be characterized by D1 over R minus G. That is merely just a <coughs> rearrangement of this formula right here. Um, and I might point out as well that D1 
is actually the same as D0, which is the dividend that was paid last period. Let's just pop that over here in our list of, of variables. D0 is dividend. And that's going to be last period. And these are keywords, by the way. D1 is next period, D0 is last period. Those are keywords because in the exam when he asks you questions, um, the question will usually begin by either giving you the D0 or the D1. He won't say, oh look, here's D0, or look, here's D1. He'll say, the company paid out, whoa, well that's past tense, that's D0, or the company are expected to pay, whoa, he's speaking about the future, must be speaking about D1. So when you're looking through the paragraph, always make sure to isolate these variables, but do it right don't write down that D0 is D1 or vice versa. If he's speaking about the past, he's speaking about D0. If he's speaking about the future, he's speaking about D1. Okay, so let's get back here. Um, this P0 equals D1 over R minus G is actually the same as saying D0 times 1 plus G over R minus G. And you should be able to see why that's exactly the same thing, but if not, then let me just spell it out for you. Let's pull over this D0 1 plus g, and show you why that actually equals d1. Well, let's do this. d0 times 1 is just d0, so that's the dividend that we got last uh, period, plus d0 times g, so it's the growth rate, which is, you know, as a percentage, multiplied by d0. So we actually have whatever the dividend was last period, plus some growth rate, i.e. the growth rate at which this common stock dividend is growing, multiplied by uh, G. So this actually does come out to D1. So you should see now that D0 times 1 plus G is actually the same as D1. So if you were asked to calculate um, the intrinsic value of a stock, or calculate the price of the stock, um, you know, he would essentially be giving you one of these uh, so one of these variables, either D0 or D1, and then giving you the rest, and then asking you to calculate for P0. Um, so that's really the nature of those questions. So this is the formula right here to calculate a constant growth stock. Let's just write that down. Constant growth. Constant growth stock. Um, as far as a stock that doesn't grow at all, um, it's actually the same formula, um, but it can really be refined. Um, so let's write over here, oops, uh, zero, uh, zero growth, and, oops, zero growth. Now, when there's zero growth, that's essentially just saying, i.e., g equals zero. So let's see what happens to the formula from this to a zero growth stock. So let's just underline this, just create some space. Um, the zero growth stock is, is going to be as follows. P0 equals D1 over R minus G. Well, G is zero, so it's just D1 over R. And that would be the same as D0 times 1 plus well, g is 0 over r minus g. Well, g is 0. So that 1 plus 0 multiplied by d0 also goes. So what you see, that the present value of a zero growth stock is d1 over r, which is the same as d0 over r, which would be the same as d2, d3, d75, d362. Why? Because there's no growth in this stock. And therefore, because the dividend is exactly the same, every single period, as long as your rate of return is the same, which we are assuming it is, then the present value is just going to be D1 over R. Um, we'll get to, to some other, other uh, stock valuation in the next video. Thanks for watching.